All right, everybody. Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. I'm your host, Christopher Bell, certified public accountant. And on this channel, I don't beat around the bush. If you're a financial mess, I'm going to let you know. And I'm going to make you cry. But at the end of the day, you're going to listen to what I have to say because I know what I'm freaking doing. Okay? I got that net worth. I got that insurance. I got that retirement. I know what I'm doing. And if you listen to me, you will find financial success and be very happy, hopefully. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna talk about me and my experiences as a financial advisor. Now, I talk a lot about when I was a financial advisor, but I really wanna to explain to you how the whole process works. How does one become a financial advisor, all right? In my case, I was getting out of the military and I needed a freaking job. And since I was an infantry officer and I was highly skilled in maneuvering and shooting, I wasn't qualified for many jobs. And I saw this job where it said, you can be a financial advisor and serve the military and take care of military families. And I said, wow, that's pretty cool. I kind of like personal finance and I can actually work on it and help people 24 seven. That would be cool. So I signed up for it and here's how it worked. All you have to do is have a bachelor's degree and pass some freaking tests offered by FINRA that basically certify you to sell investment products and insurance to people because the government regulates what can be sold, especially financial products and insurance products because in the past, a lot of people have been screwed over. So the government's kind of there as an oversight. They serve an oversight function. So I interviewed with my boss. I had to Skype him. And after I interviewed him, I was very impressive. I impressed him. And he accepted me into the company. At that point, I was assigned a uh, supervisor who kind of mentored me through the testing process. So when you get accepted, when you pass the interview as a financial advisor, as long as you do interview well and you have a bachelor's degree, you might, you might get in. You have to take some certification tests. You have to take the Series 6 or the Series 7, which license you to sell products. You have to take the Series 66, which just kind of licenses you to give financial advice, I believe. I actually forgot that one, but that's one of the tests. And then you have to take the Life, Health, and Annuities test, which allows you to sell insurance policies in your state. So I took the health, life, and annuities test in Virginia, the Series 6 and, sorry, the Series 7 and the Series 66. The Series 7 is probably the hardest test because you have to learn a bunch of crap about investing and options and financial regulations and all that stuff. And it's kind of there to make sure you know that you're not violating any rules that are promulgated by the SEC. You don't want to get in trouble. And that's kind of what that test does. And once you pass the test, you're licensed to sell crap to people. Loaded mutual funds, annuities, whatever. So the first test I took was the Series 7, and the company actually provided me study materials for free. And I just studied every night for about a month and a half, every night, consistently. I didn't screw off like some of you do. And I took the test and I passed it, okay? After I took the Series 7, I took the Series 66, which is not really a lot of math. It's more of like knowing laws and regulations and crap like that, from what I remember. And I passed that one, and then I took the health, life, and annuities test, which is the freaking easiest one by far. It's basic crap about what life insurance and health insurance are, okay? And at that point, I was technically qualified to be a financial advisor, all right? So that's what most of your advisors need to become financial advisors. They will probably have a bachelor's degree and they'll take three tests that supposedly qualify you to be a financial advisor. The next step was company training. So my company gave us a script that we had to memorize that coached our clients through the sales process. And we had to literally memorize 40 pages of script and presentations with charts to actually sell the product, sell our clients the product. And my boss would test me. So we would meet up 
and he would go, he would rehearse the script with me. So I would say, uh, look at this chart, you know, this is the benefits of whole life, yada, yada, yada. And then he would act as the client. And the purpose of that is to help you sell because the company and the senior advisors know what they're doing. They've been doing it forever and they know the script and they've kind of built a script that helps new advisors kind of get in off their feet. So that's what I did. I literally memorized a freaking script to sell products to people. Once I memorized the script and I was good to go, I then flew to the company's headquarters for I think about a week of training. So I actually flew across the freaking ocean to get some training for my company, okay? And they tested me, they had, they wined and dined us, I got to meet other advisors and get pumped and get sold the benefits of whole life and all that stuff. And it was okay, you know, got to fly to the States and get a free hotel, whatever. It was a good time. After that, I was certified. I was actually ready to sell. So I had all my licenses, Series 6 or 7, Series 66, and Health, Life, and Annuities, and I had passed the internal training of the company. At that point, you're ready to go out into the world as a financial advisor and sell products. So I went back to where my home office was, and I basically was just kind of thrown to the wolves. And that's kind of how it is with commissioned financial advisors. They have to go out and find clients. There's no list that you can reference. You literally have to go into your community and network and meet people and try to draw them in. And then at that point, you sit them down with a meeting and you try to impress them with your memorized script. Now, what was I trying to sell these people? Because we were such a great company. We were so good to the military. What was I selling? Well, I was selling a multi-step process, a multi-component process. I try to get my clients to bank with us. I try to get my clients to buy whole life insurance, which is permanent insurance that lasts your entire life. And I try to get my clients to invest in mutual funds, loaded mutual funds. Two of them are complete garbage, two. That's the whole life and the loaded mutual funds. And the banking is just a bank whatever. The reason that commission advisors sell whole life and loaded mutual funds is because they pay high commissions. We were pushed in our training to sell whole life insurance because you get a massive commission when you sell that. What they do is, let's say I sell somebody a $200 a month whole life policy, which covers them their entire life as long as they pay the premium. If I sell a $200 policy, what the life insurance company does is they pay me an advance commission. So they're going to pay me or pay you if you want to be a financial advisor. They pay you up front about 10 to 12 months worth of premium up front. So I sold a $200 policy. Boom. Right off the bat, I get a $2,000 check. All right. And basically, once you get that check, you then start getting trailing commissions. Every time the client pays their premium, you get a little commission. And the company that I worked for got a commission and my boss got a little commission. So if you think about it, the client that bought the whole life policy paid a lot of commission up front because a lot of people were getting paid a lot of money, which is why whole life is trash. Also, it's very expensive. And here's the kicker if you wanna be a financial advisor. Let's say you sell a policy, right? And you get that commission paid up front. Well, guess what? If they cancel in the first couple of months, you owe money back. That's right, because they pay you up front for a year's worth of commissions, if they cancel, you're in freaking debt. On top of that, I sold loaded mutual funds, which basically is a sales charge on any mutual fund that I sell. And I also got an upfront commission for that. And just like the whole life, if somebody cancels and they're like, I don't wanna invest every month, you owe money to the freaking company, which is a pain. You can actually go into debt. On top of that, I had to pay rent for an office. I had to pay a freaking admin assistant, like a $900 a month, I think. I paid a lot of freaking money and expenses. So if you're an advisor, you need to be prepared to start off not making crap and having huge expenses and being liable for owing your company money if people cancel on their policies. 
So you can imagine when you first show up, you need to get out there and hustle. Whether you're going to bazaars and trying to hook people in and talk to them or joining groups in the community, whatever, whatever you have to do to get clients. Because if you're not getting sales, if you're not getting those advanced commissions, you're screwed because you have bills. Even my freaking company charged me about 300 something dollars a month for services they provided me. So I was probably paying about $2,000 a month in freaking bills right up front when I was a financial advisor. Now, can you make a lot of money? Yes, you can. If you sell a lot of whole life and you sell a lot of loaded mutual funds and you start building your book of business and let's say you have your company as an asset management fund and you start transferring people in there, once you build a big book of business, that's just gonna pay you passive income every couple of months. But the beginning is tough because you have a lot of bills, you have a small book of clients, if you have any at all, and you're basically on your own. So if you're not hustling, working your butt off, you're gonna be screwed. Now, do I recommend that you become a financial advisor? If you don't care that you're screwing people over with garbage products, which I've talked about, whole life, loaded mutual funds, terrible asset management programs, whatever, then sure, you know, if that doesn't bother you and you just want to make money, that's fine. If you want to get paid based on advanced commissions, that can be taken back if people stop paying into their policies. If you're cool with that, that's fine. If you want to have the potential to make a lot of money in the long run, but it's very hard to do, that's fine. And the final thing is, I'm an introvert, okay? That's why I became a freaking accountant after I quit that job. I know, I'm just a CPA now, so I'm kind of a loser. I'm an introvert. I freaking hated the process of going out and trying to recruit people and schmooze them and, oh, you wanna be my friend? I hated it. And I mean, I met all my sales goals when I was working, but I freaking hated going out and talking to people because that's not me, okay? So if you're like me, if you're an introvert and you get exhausted by going out and meeting new people and experiencing stuff, it ain't the job for you, okay? So even if you have a passion for personal finance, become a freaking YouTuber if you're an introvert. Now, if you're an extrovert and you like to blab all the time, great, become a financial advisor because that will suit your personality. If you like to go join clubs and network, that's your thing, okay? So that's kind of it. So to sum up, to become a financial advisor, you gotta take a bunch of tests, you gotta cut past your company's initial training, you gotta hit the ground running and build your freaking book of business very quickly, and you're gonna have to be prepared to potentially go in debt if you don't sell your product well enough and people cancel their life insurance or whatever, okay? And if you're an introvert, trust me, you don't wanna do it. Well, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.